Well, this is the last of the Desert King. It's the last San Pedro type to get right. I had many, many figs this year. And I, I truly prize these figs. They're just a one, they're delicious. They're a great, they're a great fig. A little ant there. Let me take you on that. Nice, big, hefty, intensely flavored, delicious figs. I guess they can be considered a sort of a honey berry. If you give me a second, uh, I planted this one back in back in around April the twentieth or so. I knew that I felt that there wasn't going to be any frost after that. Usually, it's about the last frost is May first or May tenth. Is you're really really in my zone, 7A, you're, you're positive to not, or sure, not to uh, get a, a frost after the 10th of May. But this year, it was nice weather, and I, I thought I could put these in the ground a little early, and I did, so that the roots would spread and the flavor would be improved considerably over just ordinary container growth figs. This is just a little guy. I have bigger ones, much bigger ones. And I've got one back in Virginia that's that I've posted some pictures of. It was eight foot tall. One time it was twenty foot tall. Give me a second and I'll just see if I can't cut this fig. Desert King. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, I certainly do recommend this fig. It's a San Pedro type and all the figs that do get ripe are on old wood, last year's wood. But there are ways to preserve that wood, all of it, with no trouble whatsoever. And it's a toughie. I mean, it, it could take a lot of cold. But it's worth it. It's not hard to do at all. And the beautiful thing about it is that they come very early they're just as good as any other main crop fig just about except for you get more of them yeah they're brie buds but they they don't taste like breba you know they they taste like ordinary main crop figs they're just that delicious i guess that's why they named it these are king I remember reading about this quite some time ago when it was discovered, I think it was California, and this fig just took the fig world by storm. Everybody thought it was the most perfect fig. Of course, in California you get a second crop, here you don't. But it wasn't about the second crop, it was about the first crop, and it's got a huge Breba crop, huge. And it was sensational. There's so many wonderful varieties out there. This one doesn't have a real intense berry flavor. It's a mild berry flavor, but it's very, very, very delicious nonetheless. There's just so many to choose from. I want to give this one a try. I, I recommend it. It's a healthy tree. It's productive. It produces a large bunch of figs right when you're dying for them because you haven't had anything 
<laughs> all year long, all winter long. And they're big and they're juicy and they're delicious. And they're in addition to everything else it follows. It just can't go wrong. Whatever it's worth. I, I try this one if you have it. Now here's some main crop figs. I've taken this one that was loaded with main crop figs. And they, they won't get ripe, so I'm just gonna pluck them off. They'll fall off. But let the power or the energy from those figs go into the rest of the plant. By the end of the summer, this will shoot up and all these individual branches will make Reba. I mean, just be loaded next year. It's still easy to manage. Have a good day. July 3rd. Happy summer. Happy 4th of July. <laughs>